Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good morning, and maybe even good evening, depending on where in the world you are joining us from. Either way, welcome, welcome, welcome uh, to the launch event of the ATI Declaration 2025, which of course we know is taking place on the sidelines of the United Nations Economic and Social Council Forum on Finance and for Development. My name is Nozipo Shabalala, and it is an absolute pleasure to serve you as the moderator in this side event. Before we get started, I think the context that brings us to this moment is quite important. We know that it's been five years since the launch of the uh, Addis Tax Initiative. And in that time, we know that the ATI has really evolved into an increasingly important player in the field of tax and development. And so much so that the inclusive and participatory process uh, that uh, led to the ATI uh, Declaration 2025 has really been positioned as one of the ways that we can meaningfully finance the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Now, what are we are going to experience in the next 75 minutes uh, together? We will get a presentation of the ATI Declaration 2025, uh, courtesy of our co-chairs. But we'll also hear from high-level representatives that come from the ATI Development Partner, partner countries and supporting organizations, community. And they are going to be sharing um, affirming statements, uh, showing their support for the implementation of the new commitments um, of the uh, Declaration 2025, but also highlighting the significance and the relevance uh, of, the uh, of the Declaration as a means of mobilizing domestic uh, revenue uh, within the context of tax, so, such that we are able to, of course, to finance the SDGs. Ladies and gentlemen, in the 75 minutes we have together, we're also going to try and bring you a, a, a fire panel. Um, it's going to be a quick uh, panel discussion that really is also going to be looking at uh, the ATI in the context of the financing for development process. Now, before we get started on your screen right now, I think you are seeing a few hashtags on the left hand side of your screen. Help us to am amplify this conversation on social media using those hashtags that you are seeing on your screen. Last but not least, I'm going to get us started now, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to get us started by inviting one of our coaches, one of our AI coaches, Madame Jennifer mm -hmm. Bangu, to please uh, take uh, to the floor. She is, of course, the Deputy Commissioner General at the National Revenue Authority in Sierra Leone, and she's going to be giving us her welcoming remarks. So, Madam Bangura, I'm going to thank you for your patience, and I'm going to hand the floor over to you. Thank you so much. Greetings, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests. As co-chairs of the Addis Tax Initiative, ATI for short, it is a great honor for us to welcome you to the official lunch of the ATI Declaration 2025. As a multi-stakeholder partnership, the ATI plays an essential role in fostering collective action to improve tax systems in light of recognized gaps in development finance. Emerging from the third International Conference on Financing for Development in Addis Ababa in July 2015, the ATI firmly anchored within the financing for development process and has significantly contributed to the implementation of the Addis Ababa Action Agenda. Does launching the new ATI Declaration 2025 at the 2021 ECOSAC Financing for Development Forum is of great significance. It is an opportunity to emphasize the synergies between the ATI and the FFD process as well as for members of the ATI to strengthen high level commitment to domestic revenue mobilization as means to finance sustainable development and close recognized gaps in development finance. The ATI Declaration 2025 was developed last year by the members of the initiative in a highly participatory and inclusive process. This new um, partnership agenda reflects members' common vision of a world where partner countries can generate sufficient domestic revenues in an equitable, accountable, and transparent manner 
to fulfill the promise of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Members of the ATI believe that tax systems can provide manifold benefits to societies and economies by promoting economic growth, strengthening gender equality and empowering minorities, protecting the environment and reducing inequalities. By endorsing the ATI Declaration 2025, the members of the ATI reinforce their commitment to implement the Addis Ababa Action Agenda for Financing for Development through fair and effective DRM. This new declaration will not come at a more pressing moment. The global COVID-19 pandemic already cost, has already cost more than 2 million lives and has had far-reaching economic and social ramifications. It has hit the most vulnerable in our societies hardest. The pandemic has triggered an unprecedented development emergency, rocking back progress towards the sustainable development goals. Many developing countries lack the financial means to fight the pandemic and its recovery. Overall, DRM remains the most sustainable and reliable pillar of financing for development and is a vital funding source for key sectors, such as healthcare and education. The new AT, ATI Declaration 2025 represents a milestone in tax and development, which will guide ATI members within, within the first half of the decade of action to support financing the DS, D, D, SDGs through domestic revenues. Partner countries, development partners, and supporting organizations benefit from knowledge building, the sharing of experiences, and political commitment made under this partnership. We look forward to meaningful discussions, and in particular, to the presentation of the new ATI Declaration 2025. I thank you for your attention. Madam Bangura, it's a fantastic start to the conversation. Thank you very much for reminding us, of course, uh, the urgency that is required right now as we find ourselves in the decade of action, uh, bringing into the spotlight the reality of developing countries. And of course, that DRM is perhaps one of the most, if not the most reliable way in which we can finance development. It's my pleasure now to uh, welcome onto our virtual stage the Director General in the Directorate General for International Partnerships in the European Commission. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kunduns, sir, the floor is yours for your opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Nozia. Really a pleasure to be with, uh, with, with all of you. Um, obviously, for the for the official launch of the Addis Tax uh, Initiative uh, Declaration 2025. First of all, uh, because it's great that we're here together uh, to endorse uh, the ATI commitments that we formulated, agreed upon uh, together, partner countries, supporting organizations and civil society, and that indeed reflect the changing priorities, the changing challenges that we all uh, face. Um, but secondly, because this is also the moment where we, I think, want to underline um, our joint commitment to translate uh, those very strong um, 2025 commitments into concrete measures, into concrete action. And I think that, as has been said, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the, the impact it has had on our societies, hitting hardest those who are most vulnerable, um, are definitely a testimony to the absolute importance of doing this and of delivering on it. Um, because we, I think, agree that we will be only to really deliver uh, a sustainable recovery if indeed we also um, have sustained and strengthened domestic uh, revenue mobilization, which is the, the single most important source of, of revenue to finance sustainable development uh, objectives. I think that since its start in 2015, the RT really has helped um, to put DRM, domestic resource mobilization, firmly on the map and to get and generate the necessary international support for it. And I'm, I'm actually proud to say that the European Union is really well on the trajectory of doubling uh, the support we are providing to partners 
to do uh, their domestic uh, resource mobilization. So we're, we're close to a doubling since uh, 2015. And, and I think indeed that's the way uh, to go about it. I would maybe want to seize the occasion to highlight three important elements of those new commitments that uh, we in Europe really find uh, quite essential. The first element is about the fact that we need to create equitable tax systems to reduce inequalities. I think inequalities were there, were increasing, and the crisis has further aggravated it. And we now absolutely need to use fiscal policies to counter this trend. Um, collecting more and spending better means that we have to look at the revenue side and that we have to look at the expenditure side. And at a national level, this means redistributive fiscal policies with progressive tax systems. And at the regional and the international level, this means cooperation amongst states to halt what sometimes is really the race to the bottom and to put an end to aggressive tax planning. We obviously also need to deliver coherent solutions to the tax of digital economies because everyone needs to pay their fair uh, share. And the high revenues spent in an accountable manner will bring more opportunities for education, for well-functioning health systems, and for stronger social protection. So that's the first point, creating equitable tax systems in order to reduce inequalities. The second element I want to highlight is, of course, the promotion of the greening of taxation and of digital solutions. Fiscal policies need to take into account that twin transition of green and digital, um, because the green dimension is crucial to shape resilient societies that are ready to face current and future challenges. And we need policies to phase out the fossil fuel um, subsidies and to move towards carbon taxation if we want to deliver on the Paris Agreement. This needs to be done, of course, in a way that leaves no one behind and that adequately compensates the most uh, vulnerable. Digitalization to increase efficiency, taxpayer service, taxpayer service transparency, effectiveness of, of uh, tax administrations. So we see how these two transitions, green and digital, are a crucial element of taxation and domestic resource mobilization for the future. Which brings me to my third and final element, which is that it is crucial to involve relevant stakeholders in tax-related manners. We, we really believe that when involving relevant stakeholders, it's crucial to generate public debate to ensure accountability and to build broad-based broad support during the implementation. Civil society is really a great ally to make tax systems more equitable, more efficient and more responsive to new challenges in the area of climate change or digital. And having civil society on board will really help us to implement the reforms we need to strengthen the social contract because it is a fundamental step to social dialogue. DRM really is a priority for the Commission, and in particular for my Commissioner, Urpi Leinen, and the EU will continue to plea in favour of strengthened role of DRM in the discussions on the recovery. Of course, DRM is very much linked to the wider international negotiations on taxing digital economy and minimum corporate uh, taxation. I mean, consensual solutions hopefully should be found by mid-2021 through the process, uh, the G20 OECD mandated process. And in any case, we will be fully committed to this process and, and we really see it as an opportunity for a wide uh, reform. At the EU level, we're also moving forward with additional tax transparency uh, through the public country by country reporting legislation, which is now in its final stages of negotiation. And, and that's crucial because in our view, the national, the regional and the international efforts really have to add up to get uh, towards a transparent and fair, fair taxation to finance development. It all goes hand in hand. So let me close by again expressing my appreciation for the inclusive and the cooperative spirit in which this declaration was really co-created 
and by inviting us now all to join forces in delivering on its commitments. Thank you very much. It's a massive thank you to yourself, Mr. Kunduns, uh, for that uh, opening remark. And of course, uh, reminding us of three critically important um, uh, principles. One, that we need equitable tax systems uh, that really have the best shot at reducing inequalities. That as we think about the future, we need to think about the twin opportunities uh, of green um, as well as uh, digital taxation. And of course, you've spoken about the importance of involving relevant stakeholders, ensuring that we are strengthening that social contract and civil society being a key partner. I think a highlight of your statement, of course, is knowing and hearing that the EU is well on its way to doubling its support for DRM. Thank you very much for kicking us off. Now, one of the other things you've spoken about is the importance of international support. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going now to really lift some of that support. And I'm going to start off with um, a short uh, high level statement uh, that is going to be made by the Deputy Minister of Taxation uh, from Paraguay, uh, the, uh, the Honorable Oscar Orue. And of course, this is in the context of other high level representatives from ATI members who are going to be giving their support um, in, uh, towards Declaration 2025, really demonstrating their political buy in of DRM reforms as a means to financing the 2030 agenda. Deputy Minister Orue, the floor is yours. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Mrs. Co-chair, member of the delegation of the different countries, dear Al. The Republic of Paraguay recognizes that in order to successfully implement of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development on the Addis Ababa Action Agenda, as a member country of the Addis Ababa Initiative, is a necessary and constitute a fundamental element to strengthen the increase of the domestic revenue mobilization through the collection of taxes in an equitable, accountable, and transparent way. During this time of becoming a member country of the Addis Tabs Initiative, the Republic of Paraguay has taken important steps aligned with global collective with global collective effort and the shared vision of improving fiscal policies that allow countries to increase their collection taxes in, a, in an effective efficiency and fair manner, and even more so in this time of crisis. We reaffirm our commitment to carry out fiscal policies that allow the country to obtain domestic revenue mobilization to fulfill the purpose of a state. Currently, with greater emphasis on the field of health, our country has recently, recently undergone a process of the modernization and simplification of its tax system after more than 27 years with several partial legal modifications that made it inefficient and inequitable. The recent tax reform in Paraguay that came into effect in 2020 was constituted as, uh, as the result of the true public-private alliance in the concept of sustained growth in Paraguay in recent years. Also, it's important to highlight that the Republic of Paraguay advocates a responsible and sustainable fiscal policies, promoting the formalization of the economy, greater efficiency in domestic revenue mobilization, progress towards greater tax equity and, and a frontal fight against tax evasion illicit financial flows and corruption. Mrs. Kutcher, although is in intention to highlight the effort the, the Republic of Paraguay is making to carry forward and effectively implement international standards and undoubtedly benefit the domestic reven revenue mobilization. It is necessary to emphasize, to conclude that the Republic of Paraguay Reiterate is 
unalterable commitment to successful fulfillment, fulfillment to the 2030 agenda. And in the sense, we are convinced that the ATI Declaration 2025 constitutes a global commitment to, to implement, implement fiscal policy that will allow it. Without a doubt, not only to strengthen the revenues of the countries that benefit economic ground, but mainly to in increase the common wealth of society as a, as a whole. Thank you very much, co chair. Thank you very much to the Honorable Deputy Minister from Paraguay. Uh, Mr. Orue, they're giving us an example of what they have done in Paraguay, uh, focusing on equitable, accountable and transparent tax systems, and of course highlighting uh, the journey that they've been on of modernizing and simplifying their tax systems over, to, after, over since the last 27 years. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue in the same vein. Uh, we continue to hear from high uh, level representatives uh, from ATI members. We're going to hear now a message from Sierra Leone, the first Deputy Minister of Finance from Sierra Leone. We're going to hear from the Minister of Development Cooperation in Belgium. And of course, we're also going to hear from the Minister for Development Cooperation and Foreign Trade from Finland. Do enjoy this short message of support. Hello, my name is Patricia Lavery, and I'm the first Deputy Minister of Finance of Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone joined the ADIS tax initiative in 2015. And since then, Sierra Leone has been a very active member to the point that we currently hold the co-chairmanship position. As a country, we place high premium on the ADIS tax initiative, recognizing the important role the entity has and continues to play in strengthening our tax systems in general and domestic revenue mobilization in particular. Our support of the ADIS tax initiative is immense. Sierra Leone's development challenges and aspirations as articulated in a medium-term national development plan for 2018 to 2023 linked to the Sustainable Development Goals and the African Union Agenda 2063, with special emphasis on human capital development, requires enormous financial resources. I can reliably inform you that Sierra Leone needs about 8 billion United States dollars to address the aspirations of a medium-term national development plan. But against this backdrop, we have a challenging revenue base, even though we have in the past couple of years registered significant improvements in revenue ad mobilization and in our tax administration processes. Ladies and gentlemen, we can only raise our development finances if we have a strong tax system. The ADIS tax initiative and the consequent declaration 2025, therefore, comes at the right time as we hope to tap from the technical and continental opportunities within the framework of the initiative. Sierra Leone, like many ADIS tax initiative partner countries, is also vulnerable to crises such as the recent COVID pandemic, natural and environmental disasters exacerbated by the impact of climate change. Without a strong revenue and tax resilience system, we stand to be overwhelmed by these occurrences. The ADIS tax initiative, therefore, can play several roles in helping to build this resilience, especially in the areas of training and capacity, grants and funding opportunities, networking, advocacy, technological transfers, and knowledge sharing. Ladies and gentlemen, with these remarks, I would like to register Sierra Leone's profound support for the operationalization of the ADIS Tax Initiative 2025 Declaration at the 2021 
UN ECOSOC Financing for Development Forum for the benefit of all our partner countries. I thank you very much. Dear friends and colleagues, since its start in 2015, Belgium has been a proud member of this Addis Tax Initiative. Today, I am very pleased to reconfirm Belgium's commitment to this unique and important forum. It is Belgium's policy to strengthen domestic resources, mobilization in our partner countries. This policy aligns perfectly with this new declaration. Solidarity is key. Without it, we cannot overcome the many challenges brought about by this crisis. Without it, we cannot aspire for a just, fair and sustainable future. And I want to be clear. I am an advocate of solidarity, not of charity. We need structural, structural solutions. We have to enable countries to invest in the future of their citizens. Structural solutions to invest in health, education and social protection. Also, we need to ensure our joint recovery from this crisis is a sustainable one. And most of all, we need to focus on those that have been left behind. Taxation is not a burden. It is the cornerstone of our social contract. It is much more efficient to jointly invest in basic services and to have the strongest carry a heavier burden. That's why countries need fair and progressive tax systems and efficient tax administration. These generate domestic resources for essential basic services. These resources are invested in the future of citizens. But to make both taxation and public investments fair, these citizens and civil societies need to be part of the conversation. Belgium is very committed to the ITA targets. Belgium will be working with all its partners to strengthen tax capacity and the voice of citizens in these discussions. Belgium also decided to renounce certain tax benefits granted to our implementation partners in partner countries. And let me finish by thanking all of you who have been working very hard to make this Addis Tax Initiative what it is today. It is a unique, unique space, a space where all partners, partners involved can work together for fair tax systems, systems that deliver for those left behind, systems at the service of the people. Stay well, stay safe. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to take part in this event and to celebrate with you the launch of the new Andis Tax Initiative Declaration. Finland is very pleased with the Declaration's new qualitative objectives and priority areas. They are fully in line with our new taxation for development action program and they do support all the main principles of Finland's development policy. I'm especially happy for the attention the new declaration draws to progressive taxation as a means to reduce inequalities. The dimensions on gender equality and sustainable climate policy also enable new positive outcomes. Domestic resource mobilization is crucial for all well-functioning societies. It also has a central role in delivering the sustainable development goals, especially now that the COVID pandemic aggravates the financing gaps. I support all the efforts that aim to connect tax and fiscal policies more closely with the sustainable development goals. Dear friends, dear colleagues, um, Finland is committed to the Addis tax initiative targets. We are currently working on increasing our financing with a view of reaching our ATI target by next year. It's my pleasure to announce that this year Finland will initiate new projects to combat illicit financial flows in Africa and 
enhance cross-border cooperation on tax matters. Finland will also extend the scope of ongoing taxation for development activities. And just last month, we took another important step by publishing a new tax responsibility policy that applies to all Finnish development funding to the, new, to the private sector. With new guidelines, uh, we will help to ensure that every company receiving development funding operates in a tax responsible manner. Now and in the future, Finland will support solutions that combat tax havens throughout the world. Corporate for profits and other income should be taxed once in a transparent manner. The Addis Tax Initiative has significantly contributed to taxation and tax policy reforms that Finland holds dear. With the new declaration, I have good reasons to expect even better and stronger outcomes in the years to come. Thank you for your attention. I wish you all the best. Stay well, stay safe. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is just some of the voices that we're going to be hearing today. And if to just to pick up on that final note from the Minister for Development, Cooperation and Foreign Trade uh, in Finland, that uh, this is an opportunity uh, for us to really build back better with better financing and stronger tax systems and stronger uh, domestic revenue mobilization. Ladies and gentlemen, I've made a promise to you that today we're also going to hear some of the, the presentation of the ATI Declaration 2025. And so standing by to, to share that presentation with us, to talk to us about the process that informed the drafting of the declaration to talk to us about the relevance of the strategic uh, commitments to the global context that we find ourselves in now, but also the relevance of the journey ahead as we look at financing the SDGs. I've got Madame Ruspa Simu, who is, of course, the Commissioner for Domestic Taxes uh, from the Kenya Revenue Authority. And she's going to be sharing the virtual stage with Madame Erica Gerritsen, who is the Acting Director and Head of uh, budget support, public finance management, and domestic revenue mobilization. This in the Directorate General for International Partnerships in the European Commission. Thank you, Nozi. <clears throat> Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, my co-presenter and I are really pleased and honored to present to you today the new ATI declaration. Um, this comes as a result of major collaborative efforts and meeting of great minds by members of the ATI um, as a means to respond to the urgent um, challenges that faces our world today. Uh, in looking at what fost uh, fostering collective action for domestic revenue uh, mobilization, we live in times when joint efforts for mobilizing domestic revenues are more crucial than ever. And as it is, we are all facing the reality of the COVID-19 pandemic that has come with it with many things like job losses, income reductions, exposure and exposure to health risks. In response to this, governments have forcefully intervened through fiscal policies that protect vulnerable groups and reverse the looming rise in poverty and inequality when public spending needs have skyrocketed, public revenues have indeed collapsed. The pandemic further highlights um, the pandemic highlights hence once again the importance of raising domestic revenues sustainably and equitably to close the domestic financing gap and deliver on the SDGs by 2030. ATI can indeed play a very essential role in this regard. Member countries and supporting organizations can benefit from knowledge building the sharing of experiences and political commitment made under this partnership as has already been done. We therefore need collective leadership and action to ensure that we rebuild systems that reduce the human, economic and social inequalities exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic 
And this is the basis and indeed the foundation for our new ATI declaration. As has been mentioned in the beginning, um, the new ATI declaration 2025 is a result of a broad collab collective effort by the ATI members. In 2019, <clears throat> members took stock of progress and experiences made, agreeing that the ATI should continue beyond 2020. And as a result, a task force was formed to spearhead the thinking about the ATI future and a new vision and strategy. Whereas um, most of these countries at the time we were all meeting physically, this has not killed the gusto of these entities in continuing to meet. And the task force is represented by a number of countries, namely Kenya, Georgia, uh, Madagascar, the European U Commission, Norway, Germany, ATAF, the OECD, and Oxfam. Ownership and inclusiveness were indeed unique and remarkable throughout the process. All members participated in several feedback loops and finally agreed on the document that we are privileged to present to you now. Looking at the ATI Declaration 2025 first, we start by affirming our shared commitment to implement the Addis Ababa Action Agenda and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. We recognize that the COVID-19 pandemic has indeed increased the gap between domestic revenues and the financing needs. DRM has an essential role to play here since domestic revenues from taxes and non-tax sources are the most reliable and sustainable way of financing the 2020, 2030 agenda. We therefore believe that coordinated and collective actions towards this domestic revenue mobilization at the global, regional, national, and subnational levels are crucial to recover better and foster social and economic development. We also acknowledge the need to strengthen political will to implement tax reforms, strategically overcome vested interests that benefit from existing arrangements, emphasize good financial governance and enhance partner countries' efforts to implement the 2030 Agenda. I therefore wish now to present to you the vision and mission of the ATI uh, declaration. So with what I have mentioned uh, in mind, our vision is to have tax systems that work for people and advance the ADGs, SDGs whereby partner countries can generate sufficient domestic revenues to deliver essential public goods and services and tax systems can provide manifold benefits to societies and economies. This include promoting investment and economic growth, strengthening gender equality and empowering minorities, protecting the environment and reducing inequalities. So without the mission, then the vision just remains a word on paper. And so to turn this vision into reality, the ATI has the mission to promote fair and effective DRM, policy coherence, and the social contract through partnerships and knowledge building. In order to foster this vision and mission, ATI members agreed upon four new commitments, and that will be presented to you by my co-presenter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rispa, so much for, 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 for doing this uh, this part of the presentation of the, the mission and the vision. And indeed, it comes to, to me uh, to present the actual commitments. So what, what did we uh, uh, work on and what has this fantastic group of people, task force, uh, been, been, been de de designing in terms of a global commitment for us uh, for, the, for the five years to come? I will take the time to read each one of those uh, four commitments so that everybody can, uh, can, can hear them loud and, and clear. So commitment number one, ATI partner countries uh, commit to enhance DRM on the basis of equitable tax policies as well as efficient, effective and transparent revenue administrations. ATI development partners commit to supporting such reforms. To this, there are uh, four um, um, indicators that are uh, or sub-objectives that are defined. 
which are related to, to enhanced equity of tax systems in, in partner countries, improved efficiency of tax systems through modernization and institutional change, enhanced effectiveness of tax systems through strengthened capacities and capabilities, and strengthened accountability and transparency. So this is really the first, and, and it's important to read these, these words out loud because I can tell you this has been the, the result of intense uh, discussions and um, uh, uh, among among the members of the task force and beyond. It, these are uh, important um, uh, words uh, to, to read uh, one by one. So maybe going to the ATI commitment number two, ATI development partners collectively commit to maintain or surpass the 2020 global target level, uh, which was uh, at 441 million US dollars uh, of domestic revenue mobilization cooperation for country uh, owned tax reformed. Country owned tax reform is here what really counts. There is nothing like uh, providing technical assistance or capacity building when the reforms are not really the will of the country. And, and driven by the by the country. Therefore, this this is really an, an essential element to the efficiency and effective use of these this money that development partners are uh, committing uh, here to um, to to provide and to uh, to, to 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 support um, partner countries. Third commitment: uh, the ATI members commit to apply coherent and coordinated policies that foster domestic revenue mobilization and combat tax-related illicit financial flows. This, uh, this involves a whole-of-government approach. Uh, we know that tax policies and, uh, um, and in general revenue mobilization is not only the fate of the finance ministries, but that, that goes well beyond uh, this, um, the, the, the finance ministers thinking in particular, for example, of natural resources rich uh, countries. All sides uh, have a role to play, therefore, to improve uh, policy coherence. That's really a global global objective, and in this, uh, civil society uh, plays an important role in 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 pointing to the the possible incoherencies that that exist. Improved transparency and, uh, and 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 tax expenditure is is important. Tax expenditures is uh, like tax exemptions are a tool that are very much used in times like ours now when we want to re. Uh, boost the the economy, attract private sector investors, but these um, these measures need to be taken with with care, and to be to to really reflect on on their aim and and the goal that we want to reach uh, through them. So really to be used with uh, cautious. And then multilateral initiatives to combat uh, tax motivated illicit financial flows and, and tax avoidance. Uh, the press has been uh, quite eloquent on this topic recently, uh, and I really look forward to an enhance the global agenda on this uh, topic uh, through the work driven by the OECD and, uh, and the G20. ATI commitment number four, uh, ATI members uh, commit to enhance space and capacity for accountability stakeholders in partner countries to enhance um, and to engage, sorry, in tax and, and revenue matters. Here again, um, uh, state and non-state uh, actors uh, have a major uh, role to play in this accountability and this uh, uh, dialogue at uh, at country level there has to be a proper an environment to engage in this in this open uh, uh, dialogue as well as capacities to um, accountability stakeholders like the non-state actors but i'm also thinking of the um, um, supreme audit institutions uh, to to do their work uh, on on tax on tax policy and and monitor very closely and uh, finally, the civic space for holding public revenue uh, institutions accountable is, is essential. It's essential for every topic, but as has been said in the high level statements, tax policy is about the social contract in the country. Therefore, it's even particularly important when talking about tax uh, policies and tax revenues that uh, this um, accountability um, structures are fully in place and capable of expressing their views. So this was for the four uh, ATI uh, commitments. I will just close by um, pointing again to the principles and, and the partnership principles behind the uh, Addis Tax Initiative. Ownership, I, may, I already um, uh, mentioned it. The alignment of technical assistance with uh, the country and the national policies. Coordination of support. There is not a lot of money out there. 
uh, official development assistance is becoming scarce, so please make sure that there is a fully coordinated, um, uh, co full coordination around this. And this again is best led by the country uh, that is that receives this assistance. Focus on a result, evidence-based policies, uh, inclusiveness of development partnerships, accountability, transparency is uh, uh, is obviously of the essence uh, in this. Uh, and finally, two mainstreaming topics uh, which are becoming more and more important and which are the basic uh, of any sustainable long-term and inclusive society growth. Um, it's address addressing climate change and protecting the environment. We only have one planet, so um, a global crisis. We are going through a global crisis now. That is the, the sort of ringing uh, tone for the next uh, global crisis or for the other ongoing uh, um, global crisis about climate. Uh, and therefore, we, we need to join our forces around this. And finally, finally, no inclusive, no sustainable development that can take place uh, if women are not fully engaged in this process. Therefore, promotion of gender equality in uh, also in tax policies is, is an essential feature and among the, the principles of this partnership um, uh, that uh, we are now putting uh, on the uh, launching uh, for, for the approval. And what we are doing today is that we are really inviting as many um, actors, stakeholders as possible to join the ATI Declaration 2025 in accordance with the principles that um, uh, Rispa and myself have just uh, been explaining to you. So many thanks for your for your kind attention. It's a massive thank you to you, Madame Goetzen and Madame Simu, uh, for really speaking to that vision of a tax systems that work for people and advance the sustainable development goals. We appreciate the detail that you've gone through in terms of highlighting uh, the commitment and the detail under each commitment. And of course, the principles that make this all possible and give us the, the guiding light, if you will, in terms of how do we show up in that collaborative space. Thank you very much for that. And again, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you noted the invitation on that final slide to say you too can still be a part of ensuring that this decade of action counts and that you will get in touch with the team. What I am going to do now is keep another promise, which is giving you more voices of more high level representatives as stating their commitment, their, their political buy in uh, to uh, DRM reforms um, as a means of financing the 2030 agenda. And so once again, I'm going to ask you to turn your attention to these short messages. We're going to hear from the Deputy Minister for Economic Development from, uh, and Cooperation from Germany. We're going to hear from the Minister for International Development Cooperation from Sweden, the Director General for the Norwegian Agency for Development Cooperation in Norway. And we're also going to hear from the Acting Deputy Assistant Administrator uh, at the DDI Center for Democracy, Human Rights and Governance. This, of course, at the United uh, States Agency for International Development or USAID, and of course, representing the United States of America. Let's turn our attention to these short messages. Thank you so much. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, mobilizing domestic public resources is a prerequisite of every country in the world to trigger economic and social development. That is why the German government is very happy that the Addis Tax Initiative, ATI, continues with a more ambitious mandate. The ATI Declaration 2025, we share three important statements made in the declaration. First, Fiscal revenues are not an end in themselves, but a means to an end. Second, how we rise revenue is just as important as how much revenue we rise. And third, a lot more can be done with fiscal measures to promote equity in sustainable consumption patterns and to ensure that carbon emissions are considered. In practice, that means Tax systems should be designed in an equal, inclusive and fair manner. Multinational enterprises need to be taxed appropriately to pay their fair share. And governments should avoid disproportionate tax burdens for the poorest in society. The German government is strongly committed to this vision expressed at the ATI 2025 Declaration. 
improving fiscal systems in the spirit of the SDGs can be a powerful accelerator for sustainable economic and social development and for recovering forward after the pandemic. We wish the new ATI mandate every success as the initiative pursues these important goals. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished colleagues and friends, these are challenging times. The COVID-19 pandemic has pushed back development gains and negatively affected poverty, health, gender equality, democracy, and human rights. We must join forces and fight the pandemic together in solidarity across nations and build back better and greener. Attaining the Sustainable Development Goals and the goals of the Paris Agreement requires innovative measures and brave political and economic decisions. We cannot just continue like we did before. Tax income is the basic building block for creating a functioning society and finance it in the longer term. But it's not all about the money. Inclusive political decision-making, security, justice and service delivery builds trust and confidence, a social contract, if you will, between citizens and government. Which leads me to taxation and tax systems. With the right design and implementation, they can generate resources for investment and welfare, tackle inequalities, strengthen gender equality, environmental protection, and the general resilience of a nation. The rationale is simple, support capacity building to strengthen domestic resource mobilization. It is key to achieve the sustainable recovery we so urgently need. The figures clearly state why. Low and middle income countries are among the most severely affected by international tax avoidance. And this is why the Addis Tax Initiative is important. We desperately need fair and effective tax systems that work for the benefit of all people and for future generations. Sweden is a proud member of the Addis Tax Initiative since the start in 2015. I'm delighted for the opportunity to express my government's support to the new ATI declaration. We are pleased to have endorsed the declaration earlier this year. The new declaration represents a real step forward the vision and the aptly formulated four commitments will prove valuable and relevant guidance to our joint efforts to strengthen domestic revenue mobilization for development for the future. Thank you. Hi everyone from my uh, home office near uh, Oslo, Norway, or, or rather my home cupboard as I sometimes call it. It's a great pleasure to be with you for this important event. The ATI Declaration 2025 reflects uh, an even better understanding, I think, of the complexity of the challenges for facing the world right now. And Norway and Norad, we are really pleased to be a member of Addis Tax Initiative and to support the new ATI Declaration. The 2025 Declaration reflects the need to look more closely at both increasing revenues as well as strengthening the social contract through building trust in governments. This is also essential in Norway's tax for development strategy. We are pleased to see the inclusion of civil society uh, and accountability stakeholders as both important stakeholders and promoting transparency and accountability of tax systems. The renewed commitment could not have come at a more opportune time. The pandemic has erased many years of development progress and progress towards eradicating poverty. And it has also reduced more sources of income to developing countries, whether it be FDI or remittances or others, and illuminated the importance of sustainable domestic resource mobilization. Fair and better tax systems should be at the core of recovering better and greener. While we know some of what could work, we need to admit that we don't have all the answers on how to make this happen. The ATI community can play an important role in exploring options and in putting this on national and multilateral agendas, such as the financing for uh, development. We need to listen to uh, to respond to the needs of developing countries and not come with cookie cutter solutions. 
ATI represent, ten, represents a unique platform where partner countries, development partners, supporting organizations can come together uh, on an equal footing to learn, exchange uh, and promote better results in tax related development cooperation. This kind of a change is critical to ensure that we continuously improve results of development cooperation. And with that, uh, I wish you a great day uh, together uh, this event. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Don Chisholm, and I'm the Acting Deputy Assistant Administrator for the Democracy, Human Rights, and Governance Center at the U.S. Agency for International Development. The U.S. was a founding member of the Addis Tax Initiative, and since its launch in 2015, USAID has proudly served as the U.S. government's ATI liaison. We were ATI stalwarts from the very beginning, and I'm proud to say that our commitment to the ATI and to domestic resource mobilization is as strong today as ever. ATI Declaration 2025 builds on an impressive list of achievements over the initiative's first five years. Together, we've raised the global visibility of domestic resource mobilization, we've greatly expanded international DRM cooperation, and we've energized dozens of countries to make DRM a mainstream development priority. This unique ATI partnership provides evidence that meaningful results can be achieved by working together. But our ATI journey is only just beginning. The world faces unprecedented challenges from responding to a worldwide pandemic and its economic consequences to mitigating and adapting to climate change. Confronting these challenges and keeping the 2030 agenda on track will only be possible if we all recommit ourselves to DRM. Only with robust, transparent, and equitable tax systems can countries successfully rebuild and become more resilient. In this respect, Declaration 2025 could not be more timely. It not only embodies the lessons learned from five years of collective action, it also challenges us to dream beyond the traditional boundaries of taxation. We want to crowd in a wider array of stakeholders and look at DRM as more than just dollars and cents, but also as part of the solution to today's most pressing challenges. Collectively, we have the opportunity to shape the financing for development agenda for years to come. On behalf of USAID, I'm energized to work with our ATI partners to operationalize the vision of ATI Declaration 2025. Here's to five more years of fruitful collaboration and progress. Thank you. I couldn't echo that any better. Here's to five more years of progress. And that's a massive thank you to all our high level representatives that we've just heard. Now, the key focus of this panel conversation is to really look at the role of the ATI in the context of the mission to recover better from this global pandemic. Um, of course, uh, we are looking at the ATI in the context of financing for development, in the context of the decade of action, but also in response to the call to action to move from billions to trillions in our sustainable agenda. I'm going to ask my panelists now as I introduce them to kindly please put their cameras on so we can see them and let's stay on um, as we have this conversation. I'm going to um, see on my screen right now Essa uh, Jalo, who is of course the Deputy Commissioner General. Uh, thank you very much sir for that big wave uh, that is at the Gambia, Gambia Revenue Authority. Thank you very much for being here. If I could ask you, sir, just to tilt your camera just a little bit downward so that we can see more of you uh, on the screen, that would be fantastic. Uh, we're also being joined by Madame uh, Katia Maya. You're going to be seeing her on your screen shortly. I'm going to ask her to please put her camera on. She is, of course, the Executive uh, Director at Oxfam Brazil. Thank you very much, Madame, for being here. We're joined, um, seeing on my screen, by Mr. Stephen Rosner. Uh, thank you very much, Stephen, for being here. He is a Senior Advisor 
looking after economic government governance at USAID uh, for the United States. Of course, thank you very much, Steve, for being here with us. And last but not least in this conversation, we're seeing on our screens uh, Jürgen Zattler, who is, of course, the Director General for the International Development Policy Agenda 2030 and Climate, this in the Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development in Germany. Thank you all for making the time uh, to join us. Mr. Jello, I'm going to start off with you. Very quickly, what do you see as the main challenge for the recovery from COVID-19 pandemic in partner countries? But most importantly, how can tax systems support partner countries to build back better and to recover better? Your thoughts, please, Mr. Jello. If I can ask you to unmute, please, sir. Uh, good afternoon to everyone, you know, joining this very important uh, event. And uh, uh, before attempting to say anything, I want to reaffirm the commitment of the Gambia to the work of the ATI under the ATI Declaration 2025 as a significant contribution to the financing for development process. Uh, as you put it, uh, you know, we are, you know, emerging, we, 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 we find ourselves, you know, in very deep crisis. To begin with, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic caught most of us, you know, by surprise. And so it qualifies as an external shock and pandemic with catastrophic ramifications to society, the economy, and tax systems in particular. So it's like it's a struggle for all. So we are all trying to, you know, find parties, you know, in terms of, you know, getting out of this. Just to give you an example, um, in the Gambia, you know, the Gambia Revenue Authority mobilizes close to 80% of the domestic tax revenues that are required, you know, to provide financing through the national budget. So in uh, uh, looking at uh, 20, between 2019 and uh, between 2019 and 2020, the Gambia Revenue Authority was able to register only 7.3%, you know, growth in revenues relative to 2019. Now, comparatively, if you look at what happened, you know, between 2018 and 2019, our revenues were growing at 20%. So this is a drop in growth from 20% to 7.3%. We are talking about 12.7, you know, uh, percentage point drops, drop in our revenues. And I'm sure it's the same story for a lot of, you know, uh, the, 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 the partner countries. And you can imagine the kind of impact this would have. And in most of our countries, what you, you saw when the COVID started, our governments, we are coming out to provide social protection to our, to our population to our vulnerable population, providing free food and other interventions. And that is coming at a time when government expenditures have increased enormously, when the revenue base was shrinking. So this is the kind of challenge that really characterizes, you know, what we are facing currently. And now, you know, it's about how we can get out of this deep, you know, uh, crisis. And we are happy that, you know, the kind of efforts that are coming from the ATI and all the partners, particularly our development partners, will go a long way in terms of you know, providing the necessary causing, the necessary pol policy direction so that we can recover faster because you know, the, 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 the problems are so deep that a faster recovery strategy you know, is what we need in terms of providing sustainable you know, solutions to our revenues so that we can you know, be you know, able to provide the necessary developmental financing. As you know, we are, as developing countries, the, 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 the priorities are, are huge and enormous. And now that we find ourselves in this situation, it will require global partnership, particularly, you know, with our development partners to, 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 to find pathways in terms of, you know, getting out of uh, this kind of situation. Uh, I want to stop here for the time. Thank you very much, Mr. Jello. I think it's a fantastic response um, and giving us that very real example of that uh, percentage drop in terms of uh, the revenue, uh, uh, tax revenue. Speaking, of course, also about the other competing priorities as the government looks to provide social protection nets uh, for the population. And what I'm hearing you saying is that it's not just about recovering better, it is about recovering faster too. And so the importance of making sure that our tax systems work. Mr. Zatler, let me come to you next because um, maybe building on what Mr. Jello has said, we know that uh, the world is on a path to recovery from COVID, even if we are at different 
uh, uh, places in that recovery, depending on where you are in the world. But the question to you then becomes, how do you see the role of DRM in this larger context of recovery? Mr. Zatler. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Nosifo. Uh, and a pleasure to, to be here. We, we really fully uh, support and continue to support that uh, initiative. Very important. To your questions. Um, yes. Uh, when you look at the situation after uh, the um, the pandemic, so we are not yet through, but assume that uh, the situation will improve. So we are talking about recovery. And there, of course, we need the resources. That's one point, because uh, fiscal space is shrinking, is very low, and debt is increasing. So we need the resources. But the second point is perhaps even more important. This is with taxing, you have a structural impact on the economy. You steer the economy and you have an impact on allocation, on resource allocation. And that's a lot about transforming our economies and making them fit for the future. Therefore, I think we also have to, to look at that. And those are, uh, there are two issues already highlighted by, by others, um, for example, by Kuhn Duns and by my Finnish colleague. So it's about social dimension and environmental dimension for me. So the, the social dimension, we have seen that COVID has exacerbated social uh, uh, disparities. There is more public support uh, for uh, public uh, services, increasing, improving public services, more in uh, investment in that. And um, what we can see is that there seems to be also additional room for a more progressive uh, taxation. And this also has been mentioned. And for example, already years ago, the IMF told us that uh, more equality also in fiscal uh, space is good for the economy, is good for growth. So if we want to see a strong recovery, we have to look at that. For example, taxing assets like land, like capital gains, like inherited uh, taxes. And again, going back to the IMF, the IMF only recently called for a, a temporary COVID-19 recovery a contribution, uh, levied on high incomes or wealth. So that's very interesting. And also publicly backed the call by the US uh, for a minimum corporate tax rate, also very important. So let us look at, at that, what it means for developing countries. So that's social. The second point is environment, even more interesting. Uh, we have to transform our economies to low carbon uh, economies. That's clear. If you don't do it, you will be left behind. No growth, no competitiveness, no increase in productivity. So this does not necessarily need more resources. On the contrary, it could create resources. Um, for example, uh, if you get rid of or phase out uh, fossil fuel subsidies, if you introduce environmental harmful taxes or a carbon tax. This will create resources you can use for other purposes. Germany is supporting the IMF and the World Bank to get that done, to look at fiscal policies from a climate perspective. It's really high time to do that. We can't afford to neglect uh, the situation, developing countries in that respect. We are looking at our own economies that way, so we should also and uh, benefit uh, uh, developing countries in that way. Thanks a lot. Over to you. Mr. Zattler, again, um, a, a really fantastic contribution. Um, speaking about the opportunity for structural impact uh, through taxation and the allocation uh, of resources, you've spoken of, you've looked at the social and the environmental uh, dimension. But two of the things you've, you've mentioned that I want to bring to you, Madam Maya. You've spoken about the trend of more progressive taxation. You've spoken about the call for equality. And, and so, Madam Maya, if we pause and we look at the Declaration 2025, we see that members are committed to gradually strengthening progressive revenue sources. Uh, they are um, looking at advancing the level of, of progressive progressivity within tax and non-tax revenues. The question to you is, what do you see as the main challenge to the implementation of this commitment? But I suppose more importantly for this conversation, can the ATI play a decisive role 
in supporting countries to overcome these challenges as they arise. Madam, you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Nose, and hello, everyone. You know, you are on mute. Is the men words we say since last year. Um, first, I think that it's important to reassure that um, the level of inequalities that the COVID-19 show exposed to us as civilization is deeply, is cruel, and it's like we are losing our humanity because the, the pandemic shows so extremes. And there is one thing very important on that, is that these extremes, this concentration of wealth, this um, um, injustice on, on, on the way that the resources are distributed in the world was created by us, men and women in the world. So this shows that we can change the situation. And this is very important because sometimes it's like we are locked in and we cannot find a solution. So the solution is there. Um, some of the main challenge uh, to have an equitable, sorry with my English, uh, equitable tax system are, we can, can mention uh, a couple of them, domestic and international politics. The outsized influence of corporation and wealth individuals. It's it's so it's so explicit how this the, the different power um, exists in the world inside the countries in terms of who has more advantage than others, who has more privileges than others. The digitalization of the economy, the public attitudes on taxation and a broken citizen state compact among others. Moreover, in the current crisis, governments simply trying to make debt, debt payments. At the same time, they try to keep hospitals and the schools open. This is like there is nothing that justify in a, in, in a situation that we are facing the world that countries, governments should to choose, should, is, are put in a situation to choose between health education for its own population and payment of debts, for example. Um, I, I think also that um, there is there is a challenge that it's connected with our unjust world in terms of gender. When you look, the people that are more affected by the, 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 the poverty and the lack of access for public services and lack of opportunity for development in life, they are women. And in countries like my country, for example, Brazil, they are not just women, they are black women, because the racism also is part of our society. So I think that the challenges are there, but the important is that we can face this challenge. And the, the ITI has an important role on that, uh, on this partnership and this dialogue. But mm. we really need to have the big guys, the big wealth people, the big companies making a lot of profit, and the government taking their responsibility in terms of looking for a progressive tax. Thank you. Fantastic. Madam, 
Uh, Maya, thank you for that. You've raised the challenges uh, unequivocally. You've put them on the table and you've made a call to action about how we might begin to look at ways of overcoming these challenges. And all of this uh, creates more space for us to engage, to have the conversation and to lean on to the declaration to help us find the answers. And so, Mr. Rosner, let me come to you next, because, um, you know, part of the themes that are coming out of this conversation is that DRM is relevant if we want to strengthen the resilience and the response of uh, countries in times of crisis. The question to you is, how do we do that? And how can uh, domestic public revenues be enhanced so that we actually have a chance at closing these gaps in development finance? I'm keen to hear your thoughts. Well, thanks for that. Well, you know, the events of the past year really underscore just how central DRM is to countries' ability to weather these kinds of shocks. And we, we now know that countries that had greater fiscal space and stronger revenue bases before the pandemic were able to pursue massive fiscal stimulus packages after the crisis struck, including ambitious measures to ramp up emergency spending and even measures to provide tax relief to the hardest hit businesses and households. You know, by contrast, the policy responses were far smaller in countries that entered the crisis with less fiscal space and larger revenue gaps. The pandemic now has only widened those gaps and this at a time when those resources are arguably needed most. Um, but you know, as, as the saying goes, out of adversity comes opportunity. And in this case, it's a rare opportunity for countries to hit reset and, and really start to reimagine their revenue mobilization, their DRM strategies. Um, for instance, governments can really seize this moment to rein in the wasteful exemptions that have eroded their tax bases over the years. Uh, they can also take steps, as many have said today, to make their tax systems more progressive, more gender sensitive, more inclusive, and by doing so, begin to address the inequalities that the crisis has only magnified. For resource dependent countries, many of whom felt the double shock of COVID and collapsing commodity prices last year, now might be the time to start building more stable and citizen responsive tax regimes for the future. And, you know, I'd be remiss if I failed to mention tax based approaches to combating climate change. Uh, including policies to incentivize investments that help countries to build back greener. You know, collectively, these kinds of measures have the potential to help countries close existing revenue gaps in ways that make them not only more resilient, but also better prepared for the next crisis. So Steve, I've got literally uh, one and a half minutes left, so I'm going to attempt to pull a rabbit out of a hat here by uh, asking a very quick question, and maybe I might even get in a question uh, um, uh, from our other participants as well. But outside of um, providing aid, is there a role for the international donor community to support partner countries to foster DRM? Well, you know, there's no better embodiment of what donors can do to advance the DRM agenda than the ATI itself. Uh, and it's it's no coincidence that only one of the four commitments in Declaration 2025 directly targets providing aid. You know, the other three really emphasize what we can do through collective action to to really uh, explore new options and change the DRM conversation uh, from one purely about raising revenues to one that also promotes things like tax equity and tax transparency uh, to one that also uh, you know, from one that focuses on government capacity alone, you know, to one that also creates space for more diverse voices and more diverse perspectives to engage in the dialogue. I want to test that, Steve. I want to test that very quickly uh, with Katia. Civil society, Madame Maya, um, how can we contribute to creating space for more civil society participation and the voice of civil society. Can you capture that for me in, in 10, 15 seconds? How do we do that? It's a voice of the people that are more affected by the regress regressive taxes. So it's very important that we can guarantee their participation and that the civil society can contribute for their accountability. 
All right. So, and we hear, we heard that from Mr. Kun Junes as well, and you're really emphasizing it. Mr. Zatla, I want to bring in um, the work and the role that we know that Germany has been playing in terms of really supporting um, different uh, countries on the ground. How do, you, how do you translate that support into concrete change on the ground? What is the German approach? And then I'm going to end off with you, Mr. Jello. Yes, thank you. So uh, you, you might know Germany is uh, one of the, the most important providers of uh, technical assistance uh, and support in, in that area. Uh, so we currently have uh, uh, domestic resource mobilization related uh, project support in 30 partner countries and uh, uh, only in Africa we have 37 uh, projects. And uh, of course, uh, I, I could give you uh, two hours um, uh, examples, but just to mention perhaps a few. Uh, one is uh, uh, an example from Burkina Faso. Uh, there we have developed an equity budgeting tool, and this allows us to estimate how uh, policy measures can best benefit vulnerable groups and also promote uh, equity in different sectors. Uh, such as, for example, in health and, and education. So that's a diagnostic tool which he helps improve policies in terms of, of equity in particular. And Ukraine, uh, there we, we promote public uh, procurement uh, by helping uh, authorities uh, to implement a new procurement software. Yeah. And this has already helped um, the, the government uh, to save an estimated uh, 4.6 uh, billion euro in public procurement uh, contracts. So this is just two examples. But you know, another point very close to my heart is uh, that we only we started recently to work with uh, institutions like the IMF and the World Bank and the, the MDBs to improve their support to countries right. in terms of fiscal policy and tax policies and to make them more equitable and also more climate uh, informed and that's not an easy thing to do you really have to develop your tools and that's what we are supporting thank you and it certainly sounds like like the list is longer and uh just because of the time i'm really pushing you all to close it all up and i know we've got uh, one of our ati coaches standing by to give us a quick closing in one minute uh but before i go there mr jello i promised i'd come back to you we've spoken about the international community um, the donor community, we've heard an example of uh, some of what Germany was doing. We've spoken about the role of civil society and what they can do. In 10 seconds, how does ATI support countries to improve tax systems? And what kind of support would you like to see in the future? Okay, um, uh, thank you. Um, uh, just to uh, quickly say that, you know, I want to itemize a few priorities that I think uh, we should uh, collectively uh, pursue, get uh, more serious about uh, the business of tax policy and tax administration reforms. You know, the previous speaker talked about the IMF. You know, this is an area where they have been very helpful, but I think, you know, we need to deepen this kind of, uh, kind of engagement. The other things have to do with investments, particularly in areas that relate to our reform, pro uh, our, our, our compliance programs, digitalization of our tax systems, you know, in terms of uh, what we expect specifically from the ATI, we want, you know, the advocacy to continue, particularly advocacy in the area of, you know, strengthening cooperation, uh, also in areas that relate to mutual administrative assistance. You know, we are at different levels in terms of strength. I think if you collaborate, you know, yeah. we can assist each other. Assist also in the mobilization of donor support. This could be the technical assistance, but other areas that are also Im important to strengthening ta tax administration capacity. Encourage a new wave of tax policy and tax administration reforms. Uh, these are just a few that I wanted to bring to the table, but I know the ATI is already, you know, uh, on the way in terms of, you know, providing this kind of meaning meaningful assistance. Thank you. Mr. Jello, I appreciate you very much, and I appreciate all the panelists for really doing an incredible job of 
cramming so much in such little time. Um, and uh, I'm going to just close off now by inviting Madame Rachel Turner, Director uh, of International Finance at, uh, uh, and, uh, at the Foreign and Commonwealth and Development Office in the United Kingdom, just to close us off and to thank everyone for attending. Thank you very much to the panelists. Madame Turner, over to you. Nasibo, thank you very much. Uh, I, I just wanted to start by giving my apologies and explaining um, that our minister was not able to speak today due to protocol limitations during the period of mourning for Prince Philip. And I did want to say that, but also just to reassure everybody that the UK remains very proud to be a member of ATI. And of course, we're firmly committed to its objectives and ambitions. And, and I will just close formally, but you know, before I did that, I was thinking about what to say, and I hope you don't mind. Um, if, if I just uh, take this time to reflect on the hard work of all the staff across tax authorities in the developing world. It's been an extraordinarily stressful year for so many public servants. But I think for those with this huge burden of securing revenue, it must have been you know, very difficult as well. And we don't often talk about uh, what the year must have felt like for those servants in the financial sector. So. So I hope you don't mind me pausing to do that before I sum up formally. Um, but but let, me, let me do that now. Let me wrap up and to thank everybody um, for all their interventions and for their very strong support to the ATI Declaration 2025 and for making this event a success. I think um, we've all been inspired by the contributions that were made today. And, I hope you agree that there's been a huge amount of energy and a very practical focus on commitments in the room. And I think the commitment to delivery and to fairness has been loud and clear. I think the commitment to openness, to tackle illicit flows and tax avoidance has come through very strongly. And as well as the importance of joining forces with our ambitions on climate change and using tax for structural transformation. I mean, it really felt to me that um, over the last uh, hour or so, uh, you know, this hasn't just um, been words, but that we've really heard a commitment to action. And we know that putting words into action is hard, reforming tax systems are hard, and there will always be blockers and policy change is difficult. But I really sense such a strong energy uh, and commitment behind the declaration um, behind the uh, four commitments and the partnership principles. And I think uh, that we all agree that the ATI declaration provides such a strong framework that's rightly ambitious. Uh, and, and Sipo, as you said, uh, a framework that should give us not just a kind of long-term goal, but that is useful for managing and overcoming challenges as they arise and, and organizing us effectively behind that. So um, thank you again to um, all the uh, existing uh, members of the ATI. Thank you to the speakers, but also just finally, uh, I think it is an opportunity to invite countries and organizations who haven't yet joined the ATI to become a member. And, and I know that some are online now. So. Um, do uh, take the opportunity to understand the ATI and uh, and join if you can. Um, so thank you again to everybody. I thought that was a, a great session and uh, and a great launch. Thank you, and Supo and and colleagues. Thank you very much, Madam Turner. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the rest of the forum and uh, all the conversations there. And thank you for making the time to join us. And thank you for your indulgence uh, that we have now run over time. Enjoy the rest of the day further. Goodbye for now.